Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Garden Club program, Garden Club of Jacksonville. This is the Flower Show series, Designing the Perfect Table, featuring Laura Haley. We're so happy to have you all here. My name is Denise Reagan. I'm the Executive Director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, and I'm here with Damian Lamar Robinson, who is handling the audio and video today's program. And we are so happy to be here. And the, um, these programs could not come to you without the help of the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund, who gave us a great grant, who is helping uh, support us with hybrid programs and virtual programs, just like this one. I also would like to thank the Jupiter Island Garden Club for making this program possible. They invited Laura to speak to their club pre-COVID, <laughs> and um, this is uh, the way that uh, we've been able to do it for them. So through a, a collaboration, uh, we are providing Laura live from the Garden Club of Jacksonville. I'd like to introduce Laura, nationally recognized floral design judge, exhibitor, lecturer, and educator, Laura Haley, has made it her mission to educate others on the art of floral design. Haley is a member of Jacksonville's Late Bloomers Garden Club and the Little Garden Club of Rye in Westchester County, New York. She has instructed fellow judges on various design styles and mentored intrepid designers around the country. Haley is a 2019 National Garden Club of America American Medalist um, for outstanding achievement in the field of floral design education. She has made floral design education her passion and countless club members across the country have benefited from her work. She is a multiple blue ribbon winner in Philadelphia, Newport, Garden Club of America flower shows around the country. Please welcome Laura Haley. And if you have questions throughout the program, please put them in the chat and we will queue them up to Laura during the program. All right, Laura, it's time to take it away. Hello to all, and many, many, many thanks to Denise, Damien, and Daniel, Garden Club of Jacksonville, and Jupiter Island Garden Club for making today's virtual program possible by challenging me to try something new. Welcome to Unlocking the Mystery of Functional and Exhibition Tables. I'm going to begin with a PowerPoint on functional tables. Please send your questions as Denise indicated in the question and answer in, and in the question and answer area of the Zoom at the bottom of your screen. When we finish with the slides on functional tables, we will go um, to a live table I've created. And while I finish it, I will answer any questions you send in. After that, we will rinse and repeat with exhibition tables. Thank you for your interest in all things related to flower show. And so now on with the show. After many years of seeing functional tables submitted in a class of exhibition tables at flower shows and the confusion that ensued, I decided to take a close look at why this was happening. Today, I will attempt to show you the difference in a manner that will stay with you. First, we will look at functional tables and what makes them successful in a flower show. And then we will review more specific questions exhibitors often have about the differences between exhibition and functional tables. Tables are popular classes in flower shows for our exhibitors as well as the visitors to the show. Functional tables are exhibits that almost all can relate to. Dining tables are a part of our everyday life. A warm and gracious table setting enhances our meals. Early 20th century tablescapes and flowers for the home were influenced by Constance Spry and Gertrude Jekyll, and later by Martha Stewart, making flower arrangement something that many learned or yearned to do. Spry and Jekyll included the novel idea of cabbages, tomatoes, foliage, and dried hydrangea heaped on a sideboard or table. Stewart encouraged a decorated assemblage on our tables. Today, a flower show, including a functional table class, asks for an exhibit, including the components of dining and a floral design. Staging may vary 
from a table to the floor and all things in between and will be noted in the class description. What needs to be included? A place setting or two or four, whatever is required in the schedule. And if it isn't indicated, the size of the table surely will guide you in the number of place settings. A floral design also must be included. Remember, functionality is at the core of the design. Can one sit and dine at this exhibit? There should be an impression of order and convenience, yielding harmony and unity. The feeling that one can actually sit down and dine at the table is at utmost importance. The components should be within the same range of quality and degree of formality, as well as compatible in color, texture, and scale. The floral design may be placed wherever it contributes to the balance and rhythm of the table without blocking the line of sight for diners. I like to remind exhibitors that varying heights of the components will add to the rhythm of the overall table. Many years ago, while I was exhibiting in Canada Blooms, my hostess shared her belief that a minimum of seven different heights needed to be apparent for a successful table. I have since found that it definitely helps a table's rhythm. We will look at this as we go through the pictures in this presentation. Generally, flatware is not included. The reason for this is to prevent one's best silver from being lost or stolen. Table designs absorb accessories and in fact often need accessories more so than an exhibit on a pedestal or in a niche. Be sure the accessories do not overwhelm the table and are well integrated. And like the centerpiece, do not interfere with conversation. Accessories should be used when they play a needed part of the overall design. They should relate to the theme, not add clutter. Candles can always be added if they add to the overall distinction, regardless of the time of day. But consider the imagined delight of the candle flame, as it should not be in the sight for those imagined to be seated at the table. Our table exhibits are not unlike our other designs and reference artistic work, so one is not marked down for using candles at a luncheon table. How large should the floral design be on a functional table? Remember, it alone garners 25 points in GCA, and in NGC, the 48 points for design includes the floral component. The floral design should be in proportion and scale to the table provided and to the overall space. Another number to keep in mind is regarding the size or a floral component. The floral design should encompass one quarter to one third of the overall space allotted, which is usually the top of the table. As I mentioned already, the flowers should not interfere with implied dining conversation. Remember, this is the floral design division of a show. An orchid plant in a container is not a floral design. The flowers and or foliage should complement the color scheme being used and should match in terms of formality and casual or casualness. Let's review how the principles of design should be considered when creating a functional table. Balance. Balance will be considered in the placement of components and their relationship in how large or small and their shapes or form. Contrast. Contrast assessed by the disparity and distinction of colors, textures, and shapes, and how they work in harmony. Dominance is one of the elements needed to prevail to invite the eye into the overall design. This is often color, pattern, texture, line, or form. Rhythm. Once the eye finds its way into the design, it is finding rhythm. It will keep, the eye will keep meandering throughout. On a table, it is often achieved by varying heights of components to establish a visual line of movement. Scale and proportion will work together to appraise the relationship of plant material and components in size and form in the allotted space. Often, a tall floral design 
on a table is created for height and establishing a sense of rhythm, asking the eye to move upwards into the design. Although the tall vase allows for the floral components to be above the heads of the imagined diners, in this design, there is no transition material with plant material or components such as candles. Therefore, there is no connection from the floral design to the table. The design actually divides the space. Although there are varying heights between plates, glasses, and flowers, to create rhythm at that level, the leap to the flowers is not harmonious or contiguous, disrupt, disrupting movement of the eye and rhythm. Some of you may recognize this table from Wafa in Boston 10 years ago. This design was actually in the exhibition table class, contributing to my desire to educate others on the difference between the two table types. This design is completely characteristic of a functional table, not an exhibition table. One could sit down and dine, the hallmark of a functional table. The floral component is colorful, and the casual sense of the other components is in harmony with the flowers. Color, texture, and pattern are used successfully in the floral design. Color harmony extends to the glasses and the salad dishes, but the expanse of off-white cloth leaves large voids for the eye to jump over. Let's consider my comment about a minimum of seven different heights to create overall rhythmic, an overall rhythmic design. How many do you see? I see possibly four different heights. The table to my eye lacks rhythm. Additional components would add contrast, more texture, and a line to this tabletop and create a play with rhythm and garner more, more points for success. Here, a beautiful white Belgian linen tablecloth sets a formal tone, but are the other components formal? The color of the napkins picks up the color in the square plates. However, the size of the napkins dominates everything else on the table, with the exception of the white expanse of the tablecloth. One thing should dominate to bring the eye into the design, but a napkin is probably not the right component to feature, nor are the voids of white space presented by the cloth. Let's look at rhythm. Do you see levels of height to establish rhythm? Again, I see four different heights, which don't appear to be enough to draw my eye away from the out of proportion napkins. Let's look at the floral component. It appears to be a plant or possibly a poi fleur, a plant with a few blooms picked into it. The container is very rustic and is not harmonious with the delicate Belgian lace cloth in regard to degree of formality. It is important to remember that the floral design is a big part of the overall design in terms of the scale of points. This is the floral design division of a show. Consequently, plants do not conform to the class requirement. Of course, we consider the element space on a table. This is a large table space. The floral design is set off to one side to allow for comfortable conversation and the floral design is well done with movement and rhythm from the ridged container to the sweep of the bare grass. But is there enough rhythm in the overall design of the table itself? The proportion of overall space used in relationship to open spaces should appear uncluttered, but not bare. Would additional components of dining or an accessory add to the rhythm by utilizing the space more effectively? How many different heights are there? I count six. Perhaps the height of one or more component would make this an outstanding table. Sometimes chairs and such are added around tables. These must be balanced with the overall design as well. If the chair was removed, this design would be more balanced, almost symmetrically but the addition of the chair adds weight to one side, which is not compensated for on the table or with the floral design. Added to the setting, the chair or chairs become part of the overall design. It must be considered as such and work in concert with all other components. 
even if two chairs were placed at the table, balance would not be accomplished by the relatively small components atop the table. The comment about chairs could be attributed to any component or accessory added to the floor of a table class. Carefully consider when adding shoes, boots, watering can, et cetera, to the floor around your table and the impact the item will have on balancing with the items used above. When dominance is not successful, I prefer to refer to it as overly dominant or predominant, as in the case of the accessories in this teddy bear picnic. The wheelbarrow and picnic basket are overly dominant, commanding all the attention in relation to the teddy bears and their picnic table. Perhaps this harkens back to the Gilded Age when ostentatiousness and overabundance was popular. Regardless, as we evaluate this design using balance, rhythm, proportion, and scale, we see how the wheelbarrow, lusciously filled with a vegetarian's bounty, overpowers the table and the components upon it. This class was called Tea Time in a show aptly named Fifty Shades of Green. We are often drawn in by the clever and unique. Rhythm, color, pattern, all abound. However, a functional table must be functional, even for tea. We would not be able to sit at this setting and pour ourselves a cuppa. The gathered scarf provides contrast with the black cloth and white porcelain pot and mugs. The books offer a thoughtful accessory and the floral design complements the color. Keep in mind, as is, this table is not functional. Textures are apparent on this table. Heavy pottery and a felt cloth are compatible and consistent in casualness. The plant material is also textural. Rhythm exists in the floral fabricated pitcher through color. However, rhythm throughout the table is diminished by the inadequate use of space and paucity of components. Finally, functionality is affected by the size of the centerpiece. One can't see over or around for the four imagined diners and the mugs are filled with a stilby. Although tempting, let dining components stand as they are and don't decorate, making them incapable of being used. So now that I've shown you what not to do, what should you do? Let's look at a couple of successful tables. Balance is achieved between the tall, thin floral design and the candles and the heavier, weightier objects below. Dining components should be in a logical manner for the actual service of food, as seen here. Consistency in the choice of texture and degree of formality is established. Consider how shape, color, and form contribute to rhythm, contrast, and balance. They should add a pleasing silhouette and adequate depth. depth. The placement of the floral design adds balance to the overall design. Reviewing heights we see the exhibitor used many more than the recommended seven to create a rhythmic design. Well done. Color is an element of design that we readily react to. Bright colors used with contrast or complementary colors immediately invite us into the design. If color works side by side with its partner pattern, rhythm and balance will be achieved through artful placement of the components. The appropriately sized centerpiece, one quarter to one third of the table itself, is placed off to the side for conversation. The exhibitor selected to use flatware. The seven different heights work successfully to establish a unified rhythmic composition. So let's take a moment and look at a table I've created for you. I'm going to finish the floral component now and any questions that you've had, Denise will ask me as I work on the design. This class is named La Mesa. The class description calls for dinner for two on a 36 inch round, 29 inch high table viewed from three sides. Hello. So I've set the table for you and um, I'm going to work on the floral design for now, and then we'll talk about the whole thing together. 
So here's my container. I have it on a Lazy Susan so I can stand behind and uh, work on it and show you um, how I'm putting it together. This vine I bought in a, a long ago time when I was in New York, much too long in the flower district. Um, and it's a, it's a unnamed Linnea vine and they grow on florist floors and probably um, we're not really sure what it is, but I thought it was perfect. And since we've discussed Hogarth curve in the past, I thought maybe we would achieve that here. So I put skewers in here so I don't chew up my oasis too much. And as you as you know, the oasis is above the rim of the container, taped in with an extra uh, belt and whistle around the edge. So I'm going to stick my vine in. This is where I wish we were together because we could be ask, you could be asking your questions and calling out to me and I could see your faces. Okay, so we have our S curve coming out here. I'm going to use a little bit of um, Bells of Ireland to get some height up around my vine. I love these Xanadu leaves. I grow them in my garden and when we get a frost, I put blankets on them to keep them safe. One year I was away when we had a frost and I lost my crop. So I'm very careful about them now. You see the crazy table and I've used a pattern tablecloth which so many people have a hard time in flower shows um, doing. They, they're afraid of, of it, but I like the pattern and I think it uh, adds to the, um, you know, pattern is, a, is an element of design. I calm it down with the solid uh, place uh, plates and bowls. And if you were here, you would see that these are plastic. And people often ask, you know, do I have to use my very best ch antique china for a, um, a flower show? And in fact, you don't. Just It just depends on the um, tone of the schedule. If the schedule is about a diamond jubilee, you might want to use something more, um, uh, you wouldn't want to use plastic, uh, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> We have uh, one question uh, that asks, uh, could you please point out each level of your heights on this table? That's okay. from Debbie Bird of the Garden Okay. Club. So which way is the camera? Here? Right okay. Um, so we have a napkin, one, the charger, two, plate, three, plate, four, bowl, five, salt and pepper, six, glass, seven, eight, floral design, nine, candles, 10, 11. And I'll move my my things off when I finish so you can see it. Um, but so you can see, I once had a um, exhibitor ask me how, you know, she was working on a design for a show and she, I had taught them about the seven different heights and she um, did her table. And yes, indeed, she had seven different heights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all down within this height. And she turned up with an honorable mention and was frustrated. And I, you know, it just didn't show. You have to move, you know, get it, get it going up and down. So um, by the way, um, you you probably remember my little trick about when I'm using a calla lily to stick a pipe cleaner in, and then I can um stick the pipe cleaner into the oasis rather than the fat stem and it allows me to bend the calla down a little bit and move it and we all know that callas don't like a lot of water they get mushy in fact i picked these up from the wholesaler last week and yesterday when i started working with them 
they were already getting mushy. So I never like to um, condition them in too much water. There's a All right. So people will sometimes ask about silverware. And one of the things um, I learned from a good friend of mine in Connecticut who has hosted something called Set to Celebrate for years, um, where professionals come in and, and set the table. And they do use silverware. So they take. Uh, uh, polyester, thin polyester thread, and very carefully wrap that filament around the knives and the forks, sew it underneath the tablecloth and all around. So there's just a little bit of filament going around their silverware. So if someone were to come by and pick it up, the whole table would go clanging to the floor. So it's a safe way to um, for them to use their silver silverware. So, but in GCA, um, we don't tend to use uh, silverware for that reason. We don't want to lose it. And so uh, we don't include it, but you, you see it every once in a while in shows. So it's really up to you. And when in doubt, check the schedule. You can always ask your class consultant, can I add silverware? and they'll tell you if they want the liability. <laughs> um, can you use food on a Most flower show schedules, it will tell you that cut fruit and vegetables is not allowed. And um, I had a friend who one time used fake almonds. Um, we're never supposed to use anything fake. So no fake food. and. One of the reasons we don't want to use real food is because of bugs. And so I've seen little candies or petty fours on a table. And as a judge, you know, when we see that, it we just really want to reach out and have a bite. Um, so <laughs> if you um, if you put it on, I mean, it, especially when your show is open to the public, people will think they're supposed to take it. So I don't recommend using food. Uh, there might be a, a special, well, you'll see, I, I mean, there are opportunities that you can use something as an accessory, uh, lemons or limes or oranges. So if you were here, you would tell me, no, Laura, you need to do this or that. I, I need your eyes to help me finish this off. It's truly beautiful. So I don't um, know if I answered your question about food, but I would say, um, you know, we don't use, you can use cut food, uh, cut fruit and vegetables if you treat it. And I've, I think it's hard to do that successfully. So. Um, we do have a question about the blue, bluish flower that you're using. Oryngium. What is it? Oryngium. Can you spell it? <laughs> E-R-Y-G-I-U-M. It's also a spelling bee today. You weren't aware. Yeah. How's that? You, I can <laughs> uh, arrange flowers and spell all together. I think and that's you go pretty and walk good. All at the same time. Um, Sometimes wholesalers will get it confused and um, they'll call it thistle. It's not thistle, it's sea holly. And um, it's more expensive than sea holly, so don't correct your wholesaler if he gets it wrong. <laughs> There's so much movement to that arrangement. So it's hard to... Um, be doing this backwards. So let me just, I'm going to stick in a couple of these Gloriosa lilies because I just love the color. But you all are getting a better view of it than I am. So, you know, another question that people often ask is, well, it's viewed from three sides. Do I have to finish the back? And the answer is yes. Um, you don't have to put your very best flowers in the back, but please cover, cover it up. What happens by finishing the back is you add depth to your design. And so 
um, I'm just going to put some things back here to cover cover up. And and as judges, we can see the back from the sides. And sometimes I think in your last year, um, you know, you had tables and you could walk behind them. So they may not have been viewed from all sides, but we could walk behind it when we were looking at the horticulture. Um, so be careful about that. So hold on, I'm going to walk in front and I'm going to pop. I would like to pop a little more color in here. So we have a question from Jenny Banks at the Jupiter okay. Island Garden Club. Laura, do you normally make the floral arrangement on the table or move it when it's finished? I would normally do it separately um, and probably in a, in a show that you can bring your design completed, I would bring it in done. Um, at some shows you have to do it on, on site. Um, you know, it, you wouldn't do it on the table. And do you know, I mean, uh, there's obvious reasons for that. You um, spill water, get your tablecloth dirty. But for you guys today, I thought it was important to work right here. Um, You're also and, using your favorite tool, the Lazy Susan. Yep. I saw. So I took that <laughs> off. Okay. So now you see. Um, so here's some things that I thought about peppers. So here's a situation where, you know, I wouldn't put a pepper in the bowl. And why wouldn't I do that? Because nobody's going to eat this at <laughs> dinner or, and, and like it's decorative and it, it's pretty, but it makes my bowl not functional. So I could put them on the table and, you know, it might be interesting, but is it just adding clutter? And in the end, I, sort of feel like it's just adding clutter. So you want some space, but some, um, you know, you want things to move around. Any, any more questions? Uh, are there colors you try to avoid? No, <laughs> never. Um, I like color and it depends on the, the class and the title. And um, in abstract design, the bold use of color is a characteristic. So I use, um, you know, there are people who, who do say, oh, you always have to have blue in a design. Or um, I, I let my eye decide and, you know, you, you figure out what it is, what container you're using and how it speaks to you. Any more questions? Yeah, how, um, so tell us about using the candlesticks um, on a table. So, you know, breakfast, lunch, so, dinner. Um, and obviously this is a situation where aesthetics and etiquette don't necessarily go together. Um, from an etiquette point of view, we would not put, we wouldn't set our lunch and table with candles. Although if our dining room was set up and you know we had candelabra there, they would be there. But in a flower show, uh, candles add height. And this is an artistic interpretation. And we are not looking for um, you know, that um, etiquette, Emily Post, to come in and say, tis tis. But I do want to remind you, blacken the tips of your candles as you would at home. And never have these candles in the the lit, imagined lit in the eye of the um, diners. You know, as judges, we'll come down and we'll go like this. And if the floral design is in our face, we'll take off a few points. And the same thing with candles. So and one thing I'd like to say today is that in the PowerPoint, I'm telling you things, um, you know, remaking designs. And as a judge, that's something we never do. But I thought in terms of teaching about these, we can remake things because um, we're not judging. Well, the reviews are coming in and we have so beautiful, brava, looks amazing. So um, are you ready for exhibition? I think so, unless okay. everybody has another question. All right, and if you do have one, you think of one, we'll answer it at the we're end. We're happy All to right. answer <laughs> whenever. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again.
As I said at the beginning of this presentation, what led me to create this program was the misunderstanding of exhibition tables. Perhaps it lies in the classification as an exhibition table. Hearing table, we often think, okay, get the dishes, let's set the table. Let's see what is really meant for this type of entry. Mm -hmm. The key to this definition is artistically arranged. Perhaps if we leave out plant material as a component, more exhibition tables will actually be exhibition rather than functional. Under no circumstances should one be able to sit at an exhibition table and dine. What mm. needs to be included? Something or thing that represent dining. So possibly plates, glasses, napkins, utensils, that are then put together in a creative manner that isn't setting a table. In NGC, there are two types of exhibition tables, exhibition one and two. Exhibition one requires a completed floral design. Exhibition two does not. GCA only references in our scale of points, the inclusion of plant material. By no means is a big, beautiful floral design with a spoon or a plate or a glass inserted into it an exhibition table. The prime focus is on the components of dining, not a flower arrangement. Accessories in general are added for this purpose. I do not consider plates and glasses accessories, but rather essential components of this type of design. Do you know the elements of design? We think of elements as tangible ingredients in the creation of the design. We can see elements expressed as color, form, light, line, pattern, size, space, and texture. We can touch these. The principles guide us as to where we place the elements. Do we need to balance with pattern, create contrast with texture, establish dominance with form, build rhythm with line, and adjust for size, adjust size for scale or proportion. Knowing the principles and elements will help you understand what makes a successful entry. Things to consider when creating an exhibition table. Review the principles and elements. Not every design incorporates every element, but be on the lookout for how the elements can enhance the design. It may be as simple as adding texture. Again, I repeat, the dining components must be used in a non-functional approach. The class title will also direct your thinking with regards to selections and direction of the exhibit. Color and textural harmony should be balanced, line, form, size, etc. Conformance is addressed in passing and again in judging. In passing, size restraints noted in the schedule and the class description will be reviewed. Corrections may be made at this time if size is exceeded or invasive plant material was used or other infractions. If you have not actually created an exhibition table, the judges will deduct for conformance and the 15 or 20 points allotted for conformance will be lost. Finally, distinction considers the success of all the aforementioned items along with the pristine condition of any plant material. Losing points in other areas will deduct additional points with distinction. So let's move on as a picture is worth a thousand words. As we look at this contemporary approach to an exhibition table, we think of dining simply because plates and glasses are used. There is nothing in this design that has to do with the actual ability to serve food. The primary purpose is to show artistic coordination of a variety of components, not just random groupings of unrelated objects, but rather objects used for some kind of food or drink related activity. The exhibit, exhibit conveys the spirit of a meal, but cannot be used to have a repast. Primary colors and the repetition of forms create a unified design with contrast. 
In a class title that celebrated Diamond Jubilee, dominance may be seen in the color repeated with tablecloth, diamond structure, and the orchids. Purple as relatable to royalty. Plates are vertical and an overlay is bunched in soft ruffles of metallic fabric, repeating the tones of the pewter plates and pewter candle holders. No evidence of functionality is apparent. In this class, a design incorporating something from the kitchen was required. The color black is distributed throughout, utilizing an oven rack and unbeknownst to the exhibitor, to be placed in front of a black mullioned window. The unexpected staging adds to the dominance of lines, texture, and color. The myriad lines distribute rhythm and texture throughout the exhibit. The components are all in relative proportion and scale. Again, we think of dining, but can't dine at a table of this type. Here, the exhibitor used materials placed high and low with the distinctive contrast between black and vibrant colors. The completed floral design adds distinction and is skillfully executed. Louise Nevelson would have been proud of the black components created as only an artist can. The assemblage of kitchen utensils, plates, and glasses painted flat black are dramatic. Rhythm flows through the black components following the vertical black plate into the structure that holds the brilliance of the cascading flowers. Again, we see the impression of dining conveyed, but without a set table. A completed floral design is used here as an example of exhibit one in national garden clubs. In GCA, we only require plant material be included, and that would not be a plant, such as an exhibition table in and exhibition two table in NGC. In this design, plant material is used to add color, texture, form, and balance to the overall composition. The upright position of the plate aids repetition of color. The open form of the structure contains repeating lines, offering contrast in color and space. The repeating round form establishes rhythm. The large Ensuring a degree of depth. A large napkin is tied to the candle, repeating color, but also creating a dominant diagonal line to draw the eye into the design. Components are used creatively, but not functionally. Color and pattern create harmony and unity with the relationship of components. The plant material is used effectively to add color, which helps to move the eye through the design. Again, dining is suggested but not as available, uh, an available function. Exhibition tables are original compositions in comparison to the functional table. These creative and artistic designs are often winners of special awards and can be completely out of the box entries. The design space allotted to the exhibitor is crucial consideration. Always recreate your space when practicing any design entry. And this includes all table types and all designs in a flower show for practice. The scale of the design must be compatible to the staging and space provided. Exhibition tables are not wonderful mass arrangements or profusions of flowers with one suggestion of dining inserted. Such an inclusion would rather amount to an accessory. In exhibition tables, we are looking for components of dining to be a creative compilation. Finished floral designs are not considered in the scale of points. Plant material is used, sometimes sparingly, to augment a line, add color or pattern. I encourage you to refer to the thought-provoking modern and contemporary art for inspiration. Let's think about all the wonderful F words to cheer when encouraging flower shows. Fabulous flowers, fantastic food, fascinating friends, free fundraising, fostering fellowship, but most importantly, fun, fun, fun. So let's take a moment and look at an exhibition table also with the same class title, La Mesa, on a 35-inch round, 29 inches high. 
So get my shears. Sometimes I think when I created this program, I thought, well, this, I don't have to talk. This says it right here, um, as opposed to something very functional. Here is my um, sort of idea of a, a, a crazy uh, exhibition table. So you can see, I think, that right here in the center, I have a little oasis cage that I glued onto I've got a U glue dot there and copper wire attaching it. I've, but I still, and Jenny, this one I would have to do uh, on site. It would be hard to bring this uh, together. And so always protect, you know, I know that that's going to drip a little bit. So I want to protect my components here and so that I don't get them um, wet or spotted for the show. So, like a Girl Scout, always come prepared. Come prepared, right. <laughs> so here, um, you know, anything's possible. I've done this design where I've only used foliage and it works because there's a lot of color here going on. And so I'm gonna start with some of more of the Xanadu. So I've used the same components as from the other um, table, so it's dripping. Um, I have, um, you know, all these plastic plates. I've used more of them here than I did on the other table. But um, so, how are you holding those up? What are those cool little devices that are? Oh, oh, plates? oh! Yes, I should mention that. One second. Let me <laughs> get a sample for you. So this is solid copper wire purchased at Home Depot and with a very heavy pair of um, pliers bent to ground this pole. This is a wooden base, um, like a cutting board almost, also purchased at Home Depot, a pipe screwed in to the base. And so these go on to this and I can move them. They just are leveraged in such a way that you can go up and I, I, you know, can move, take them off and, you know, make it lower. The, here we routed um, uh, a hole here so I could stand the plates up at the bottom. You can use some power tools to create this. You do. <laughs> and, and anyone who's seen me at work, I, I did a, a workshop um, last year um, locally at a church and the minister came in and he was like, whoa, women with power tools, you know, and I had, um, I think I had a power, I had my Dremel with me. And I think all of us, you know, anybody who's serious about botanical jewelry or, um, you know, I mean, a Dremel is, is a good uh, item to have in your toolbox. But yeah, you, you need, and it's always good to have a, uh, a companion that has strong hands and um, either a husband or a handyman who can help you in the process. So what do we think of these? That's beautiful. What is that? These are croton leaves. And um, I think it's fun to just use foliage sometimes. And these add a lot of color, picking up the, you know, the plates and what else is in there? Let's see. So you can see that, you know, my oasis is dripping and that's why I've got the paper tire and the, the nap, uh, the um, dish towel down below. I've, what I've done with these croton leaves is I've wired, um, used a skewer and some floral tape to uh, attach. So it's on there. To give them and, something solid to and they, stick in. Yes, and they hold up out of water. Um, you know, it's going in, so the tip will get some water, but it is, it's very, um, they're very sturdy and they do hold up out of water. How long does your exhibition table have to last for judging? Depends, and, and... depends on the show. Um, 
most shows are a, a couple of days. And so here's some, this is called Limelight. It's a tulip anthurium. And um, I, I think it adds a pretty color to it. So you're very quiet. There's no questions. If we <laughs> yeah, were together, I'd be asking you, what, um, what are you thinking about? So a uh, question, can I just cut fruit or vegetables on an exhibition table? No. Um, I don't want you to, I, I think I mentioned it um, when we were talking about the functional. Again, it's the same issue. You don't want to, you can use cut fruit or vegetables if you treat it. But generally speaking, not um, it, it's not a safe thing to do. And I would recommend not to um, use um, cut fruits or vegetables. I think that some of these leaves are very big. That's <laughs> what, why I'm looking for smaller ones. And don't want to attract bugs. I mean. It, when you're entering a flower show, you don't want to do anything that is questionable that will get you marked down. So I, I was thinking about, you know, the expression when you get dressed and you put all your jewelry on and then take something off. Ah, uh, the Coco Chanel's yep. famous quote, yep. right? So um, it, it's something you should think about, you know, just don't, um, don't overdo it. No clutter. Don't clutter it. All right, so how do you, let's see what I can, okay. And uh, nuts, wrapped candies, also a no-no? So I think that if you put nuts on the table, you could get bugs. Um, you invite visitors or people passing by to eat your exhibit. And the same thing with wrapped candies, so people forget. But you have to consider, is it functional? You know, don't put them in the wine glass. You're not going to do it. and. Would you, if you were setting a dinner table, would you have wrapped candies on your table? So all those things to consider. Let me pull some of this off so we can look at this. So do notice that you have some uh, bell peppers that have uh, I was going to talk about taken those. a little uh, I, I wanted center to stage here. <laughs> get them off the the table so that you all can see, and then we're going to talk about that. Let's clean this up. Let's get rid of my paper towel. Sometimes when I do this exhibit, the plates fall down and everybody goes, oh, and I, I kind of <laughs> laugh because it's hard for them not to fall down when you're doing the design, but um, that's why I use plastic. Yeah, um, I do have a question uh, from the audience. Um, what about clementines or other citrus? Okay, so I think, so look at how I've used my peppers. Um, you would never do this on a functional table because that's not functional. And, um, but on an exhibition table, it's, and it ties into it. You could use whole clementines, you could use whole apples. Um, I, I recommend that. I mean, people do, certainly in our modern mass designs, we do use uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, we do use vegetables, but we don't cut them. Here, um, you know, it, you can use a whole, you know, skewer, you know, if you were using lemons, you'd put the skewers in and put two skewers in and put it in, in into the oasis or however you were going to anchor it in your design. But um, so here's a question for you. Um, thinking about cute clutter. These are little candles that I happen to have. And, you know, they, I could put them here. But let's talk about scale and size, proportion. Are they too small? You can put your um, answer in the chat. So you can yeah. say it's too small or just right. I think it's too <laughs> small. Um, I've tried them before, and it, the reaction has always been that it's too small. So, um, so just to review, here we have an exhibition table. Plates are used creatively. It is not a mass arrangement with a plate stuck in it or under it. 
it is the focal point of the plates and the glasses. The focal point is not the floral design. We, you know, we, I, wouldn't ever, I wouldn't have to do as much as that in the design. I could you know, just have some leaves uh, included because we just, exhibition two in NGC and in GCA, we just have to include something. So, a, you know, a tendril of something coming down is, is all you need. And it should just be there to add to the design. So I stuck this on the top to cover the, you know, so like a little hat up there, but it's covering the top of my pipe. So speaking of which, um, is the holder um, of the plants, is it secured in some manner? Uh the oasis, um, it's the, the oasis cage is one of these. And I put some U-glue on the back of it, stuck it on, and then in those little holes, I used copper wire and wrapped it on. So it has um, a belt and suspenders. It has the stickum and the wire to hold it there. And I will leave that in place. And these cages, they come off the top. And I replace the oasis, soak it up. And this is the kind of thing that I soaked this earlier. And I put it up here so that it would dry out a little bit and not be so um, damp. But, you know, Denise had asked how long, you know, our flower shows are usually, you know, a, a two days. Occasionally we'll have a three day show. You always have the opportunity to come in and refresh. So if you're using something and you're, you know, it just doesn't hold up, you can replace it. So, um, and then let's, I, I just would like to talk about pattern again. I've used this table in a judging workshop, and the judges are always afraid to use this tablecloth. And I actually think the tablecloth is what draws the design. It's the, it sets the tone. I bought the fabric first, and then I picked the plates. Don't be afraid of pattern. Just don't overdo it. You know, let the pattern is dominant. It, and there it is. And then we all, everything works in concert with it. That's great. Um, how are the peppers secured? Um, someone is worried that if the table were bumped, would they just fall off? <laughs> sure stick. <laughs> sure stick. <laughs> Your green floral sure stick. <laughs> you know, some um, these were were not very um, stable, so I I put um, the green floral tape uh, around the top and stuck it on yesterday, and it's been hanging here ever since. So I think. I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, where do you find the mechanical holds? I'm not sure if uh, she them. means the. Yeah, we made them. OK. Um, you know, this is, as I said to you, you know, go to Home Depot, go to or your local hardware store. But, you know, if you have tools or you have a, a spouse that has patience <laughs> and can help you, um, that's how uh, that's how I made those. I, I actually a handyman I said here's my idea I want to do this but I can't bend this will you do this for me and so with me standing there he he did that but um, you you all know that you know my husband because I tell stories about him all the time when he saw me practicing this um, for teaching not for a show he goes oh that's a waste you should enter a show with that you'll win a pocket so um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, a you know a special award so um, it's fun, and uh, my hope that when you look, when you compare the two uh, tables, that you now know the difference between a functional and an exhibition table. So I have a question. Uh, someone would love you to um, rotate that design so we can see the uh, arrangement a little bit better. Is that possible? Sure. If a plate falls down, don't worry, though. <laughs> no gasps. Actually, it's going to be hard to do that because can we the do table, the whole table? The table, yeah, we can move the table. I think there we go. Because so for me, it's less about the design and of the flowers and more about the design of the plates and and the um, 
accessories. So the, the floral, or um, in this case, uh, the thieves are playing a supporting role. They play, that's exactly right. Very good, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> um, any more questions? Um, so if an exhibitor creates a functional table in an exhibition table class, will it be passed or is it marked down? Okay, so this is a question that we often get. It should be passed. A passer will say to you, um, did you know this was an exhibition table class? And yes, and you've created this design. And yes, I've used the plates artistically there, you know, and so the passer, as long as you're within the size and will pass you. But so conformance is considered in passing and again, in judging. So as a judge, if I came up to this as a function, as an exhibition table, or this as a functional table, I would deduct probably most of the points for conformance. So 15 or 20 points. And once you lose that, you're out of blue range. So you want to understand what you're doing. You will get passed. You should get passed, but um, it would be hard to win. And years ago, I saw something um, where it was a mass arrangement class and this exhibitor was coerced into entering to fill class and she said, well, I'm not doing mass. And she did a line mass and it was beautiful. Um, she got second place. They did not give a first in the class, but um, they deducted for conformance and it was still the best. And so you have to consider that um, as a judge, but as exhibitors, just follow the rules and, and you'll do that. And you, any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, talk about how you use the cups and napkins. Do you work in odd numbers? Oh, that's that famous question. <laughs> odd numbers. Did you know? I didn't check. Did I use odd number of callus? <laughs> I don't think about that. I use my eye to see. I have four cups here. Um, I suppose I could have added a fifth. How many plates do I have? One, two, three, two, four. I have six. So no, I don't. I, 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 those rules we learn um, early on, you know, always has to be odd numbers. Uh, rules are made to be broken. Learn the elements and the principles, know them. Know your elements and principles well, and then you will be comfortable breaking the rules. And you'll let your eye follow through the design and let your eye tell you um, that it works or it doesn't work. So Laura, you're really known for really crazy contemporary designs. That's one of your hallmarks, one of your signatures. What's one of the craziest table, exhibition tables that you've ever put together? This one. That, well, there you go. <laughs> this one. The first time, one of my first shows, um, I entered um, an exhibition table and it's that purple one. Um, that was in the presentation and I won a blue ribbon best in show in a pocket and I, I just was so overwhelmed. I've, I've never entered one again. Um, but you don't, we don't see them that often. I think uh, when I write schedules, I tend to include them in shows and uh, then I'm disappointed as how they're judged because um, we, we, our judges are still learning that this is an exhibition table not that. And it's been the reason why I do this program is so that everybody will come together and understand it's not a mass arrangement with an ice cream cone. So um, anything else? Well, one of the things I wanted to point out and just ask you to go into a little more detail, the um, pattern of the uh, tablecloths that you've used, um, you know, they're really striking, um, but they're also kind of muted. Um, and so that gives them kind of a supporting, like they pick up all the colors, but they kind of have a supporting role. And yeah. I just thought that that was a very interesting way to like put that pop of color in there, but it's, it's not, again, it's, it's strange how it's not the most dominant thing. Yes, I see in design, color is very subjective and everybody sees it differently. And I've been dinged for using too bright a color. Um, but I also feel if it was an abstract design, a bright color, bold use of color is what you're looking for. But here, yes, we don't, I've seen judges um, 
marked down a table because they felt the tablecloth was too bright. Um, it depends, you know, you have to work it to how it works together. So for here, I think using a stripe is bold. I think most people would go with the solid, maybe something textural because it's safer. But I wanted to explore outside the box and show you that don't be terribly afraid. I mean, don't use this and then flowered plates right. um, because then which is dominant? You know, where, where do I look? You want one thing. And so here, to me, the fabric is dominant, but it draws my eye to it. And there I am, and I grab onto the orange and go throughout the design. Yeah. That's how I see it. Are there any patterns you would shy away from or advise no, against? I never, I would never say never to anything because as soon as I did, somebody would do it successfully. So there's always a way, and it's really knowing the elements and principles of design and using them effectively and you have success. Do you have any final words of wisdom? My yeah. final words, as I, two things that I'll, I will say to you as I finish most of my programs, um, you know, do what you like, like what you do, and remember that another panel of judges may produce a different result. So my ribbons at home on the mantelpiece so all my friends can see as they pass and no one will ever know I was the only one in my class. Thank you. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much. Let's give her a big hand, everybody. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, before we say goodbye, I just want to share a few things with you that I thought um, both our Garden Club audience and uh, our Jupiter Island Garden Club audience might in be interested in. Uh, once again, I want to thank Laura Haley. very soon here, including contemporary designs. So we're continuing our flower show series on March 11th. Um, and you can register for that show right now on our website. And uh, I believe Damien is going to put the links to that in the chat. Um, and you can always go to the Garden Club website, gardenclubjacks.org slash events, and look at all the programs that we have coming up. In addition to that, uh, you may not be familiar with our Designer of Distinction program. Actually, last year, Laura was our Designer of Distinction, and she did a fabulous job, and I so wish that we had captured that on video. Um, we, we need to have her do it all again so we can. Uh, this year, we have Ashley Woodson-Bailey, who is from Jacksonville, um, and she is a fabulous floral designer and photographer who shoots photos of her arrangements and then turns them into beautiful works of art, fine art prints, fabrics, wallpaper, and other products. And so that will be a, a dual program. We'll have that um, both in person and on Zoom. And so anybody, um, even in Jupiter, can uh, register for that program. It's going to be really fabulous. Uh, a couple of other programs coming up. Brenda Daly is joining us on uh, uh, Zoom today, and she's the chair of the Horticulture Corner program. And the next program is Rose Therapy with Pam Greenwald of Rose Garden Angels. I highly recommend this program. Uh, she works with veterans uh, to uh, who have uh, issues with PTSD, and uh, they grow these roses and even make a little income from the selling of them. Uh, please attend that program. Um, I always get this pronounced wrong, Camp Wakiva, Camp Wakiva. I get it wrong every time. I, I always do the song, you say Wakiva, I say Wakiva. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we have a great program, our Combined Circles program, where Tina Tuttle will be talking about this fabulous program. She's with the FFGC. Um, and uh, the program is a beautiful nature uh, themed camp, uh, overnight camp for uh, children in grades one through nine, I believe. And that is on March 9th. And uh, the next Horticulture Corner program, Native Parks with Nicholas Freeman. We have two beautiful Native Parks in the Riverside Avondale neighborhood of Jacksonville. And he'll be talking about how those came together with the help of the uh, ICSIA chapter of the Florida Native Plant Society. That's on April 13th. And as always, we do surveys for all of our programs and we would really appreciate it if you would take the survey. We'll put that in the chat. We'll also send it out to everybody afterward. 
Uh, we really need your feedback. We want to know how we did on this program and get your feedback on uh, programs that we should do in the future. I want to once again want to thank the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for making programs like this possible. And I want to thank all of you out there, everybody from the Jupiter Island Garden Club. We're so happy to have you with us, everybody here in Jacksonville and beyond. And thanks again to Damien Lamar Robinson, my colleague here. And I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Goodbye, everybody.